Y'all missed the most fun part of this. I didn't have room for the camera in here while all the fighting and cursing was going on. Putting this bottom shaft in here. Uh, there's four select fit snap rings. Or they have to go on here in the exact right order for all this to go together. And you got to be sure all the collars are turned the right way. And uh, it's just a lot to get lined up. And there's not much room. And it can only go one way. And you got to hold this stuff in here. Uh, you can't put it in as it goes. So kind of a pain in the butt. But I've got that part in there. Yeah. Be sure to put the shifters in first. Lift they're down at the bottom. Change gears like it's supposed to. Be road gear. D here is engaged, which is the new faster gear for this transmission. Next up, B C. This one here. Toe. Everything in neutral. B range. A range. And park. Locked in gear. So really the counter shaft is park. Got no in play. And the pinion drag is set. So just back the toe. Right there. Neutral. So this next thing would be got to put the differential in next. So I'll get that little chunk of iron picked up and set it over in there. Check the backlash on it and if it's good to go, be ready to keep going on and get this top shaft in. So I've got the differential in here and the bolts all torqued up. And I'm checking the backlash. I got about 25 thou, which is more than I want. So I'm gonna pull the bearings back off here, reshim it, and try it again. Okay, so after some more reshimming, I got this pretty much where I want it. I'm gonna have to kind of listen for it to bang against the teeth down there. And that's it. About seven thousand, so that's where I want to have this. I'm satisfied with that. This uh, next step is getting this top shaft put together and put in here. Well, this is right here is what happens with over 800 horse on your stock transmission. You uh, rip the teeth off of high range pinion there, running road gear. So, gotta get the bearings pulled off here and all the snap rings out. Strip this thing down and put new gears back on it. Change this gear uh, for the faster speed for the pulling gear and put it back together again. So, let's see what I can get done.
show you here this is what happens if you run cheap oil in your tractors I see this all the time see the friction material is delaminating from rust you have rust occurring on all this stuff uh, moisture is your enemy and cheap oil does not do a good job of dealing with moisture at all and this stuff falls apart then you wind up with too much clearance in the drum because this pack is what makes it push over for the shift collar. Here's the shift collar and these teeth are supposed to be sharp coming out on the end uh, so that they taper in when this collar pulls over that's what actually pulls the entire machine is these spline teeth and when you get the clearance too much in here this thing doesn't work right anymore and it starts chewing these up and then you get to where it eventually it gets bad enough it starts throwing itself out of gear so we're going to put in new frictions and new steels because that's probably the, one of the main things in these jobs to put this stuff in new if you want it to work right, uh, it's not worth cheaping out on and not putting it in. And there's a new drum. And you can see how triangle shapes the tops of those are. Versus one that's worn. These are almost flat, so. Some worse than others. I guess it kind of depends on where the material was in here because as that stuff disappears, it starts cocking this drum too. So you don't want these put in dry, so. So I've got those all nice and covered with oil. Stack this up now. I don't like to put those old snap rings back. So cheap insurance, just replace them.
how I like to cook my bearings. Cheap hot plate. Got temperature control. Let's say 250 degrees. Put my bearings on here and let them cook. Well, if you turn your camera on, you'll get better footage. That's a tip from Brian. The uh, top shaft, I got it put together and uh, fished down in here. Got the new bearings on each end, put a new bushing in up here in the front that the two-speed runs in. That's important. They're usually wore real bad. So, shifters are in. The next thing I gotta do is get the pipes down in the back off this transmission pump and get it tightened up. So it sets the cup for the back bearing. Then I'll shim this front bearing to get the proper preload on this top shaft. And that just about have this part done. So let me get these O-rings down in here and I'll bring you back. Well, there it is, one rebuilt transmission. Uh, this thing's ready to hit the track and do some pulling. We got the oil line back in here, O-rings and everything on the pump back here, that's all together. Uh, it all turns still. That's a plus. And the shifters work like they're supposed to. So, this thing's ready to go back to the customer. Hope you enjoyed getting to see this thing put together. I already know that because uh, this took so long, I apparently I, I erased or wrote over some of the original footage of me starting this job, putting it together. So the counter shaft, which is the first piece you put in, I know there's no footage on that, and I don't have any footage on the bottom shaft, putting it in, but I didn't have any of it to begin with because there wasn't any room for the camera in here with me cussing and putting that thing in because that's probably the biggest pain in this whole job is getting everything in down there because it all has to be put into the case and then the pinion stuck through it so uh, there's like 10 pieces that have to all stay in line to put it together so not an easy job to do but nonetheless this one's done so hopefully they'll uh, be more conservative and not tear it up again and if they do, then maybe they'll pay me to build them an entire transmission or something that'll actually survive more than 800 horsepower. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you later.